Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career series in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we're going to find out what happens with the Duna missions we launched in the previous video. And so here we are with Duna Mission 3 and Jeb is not doing a very good job of pointing at the maneuver node. Why? Why are you... You've got reaction wheels. Why? <clears throat> Jeb... Here. I, I'm using my joystick to try and fix this. It looks like Jeb needs an extra star in order to be able to do this properly or something? What is this? Okay, well, I brought it to the maneuver node and hopefully Jeb can at least hold it there. Alright, anyway, so there's this and of course the space plane, which is the more challenging part maybe? Well, it depends on how this lander goes. So, if there are problems with this, I have not discovered them yet, but we're going to. So here we go. Uh, I guess we'll start to burn now. It's not going to be that sensitive. Okay, 0.1 meter per second difference. Let's see if that's close enough. Uh, well, a little bit more would do. Uh, we wanted to be sort of tilted to make sure that we hit the right biome, so... You know what? A polar orbit will be fine. And we're using main power in order to get into orbit, so... That's okay. Alright, we'll do that. So this is on its way. Let's take a look at the mid-course adjustment with the space plane. Hopefully it's still in contact. Okay, so here is Scavenger 1. And we need to time warp two days. It does seem to have contact still. It's got the biggest um, relay dish we've got. So it better be. We could probably do with shutting down two of the engines. No, that's close enough, and we'll refine the periapsis when we get there. So, to the tracking station, and then we'll meet up with them at the SOI. The Dres base has 40 days until its maneuver node. Uh, Scavenger 1 is entering the SOI in 23 to 24 ish. Uh, doing a mission 3 in 31-32-ish, so Scavenger 1 is first. Somebody in the comments had said you really don't want to do space planes outside uh, LKO, and I'm going to. <laughs> um, I'm especially going to do space planes around Lathe, uh, which I guess that person did not think of, but also uh, response to that comment from somebody else in the comments noted the use of ISRU that can help, but uh, there are locations other than Kerbin that have an atmosphere, and both Duna and Lathe are potentials. Lathe is better. Alright, so we want to bring the... well, there's Duna and Ike. Bring the periapsis a little bit lower. I'm gonna go with 24. I don't know how well that'll do, but we'll see. It's probably too high. Okay, let's see what would be a good orientation for our approach. I just want flat side down um, to get the maximum drag initially, and then if it turns out we're getting too much drag, we can point down and get some lift, but otherwise we might as well just encounter Duna's atmosphere with our flat side. Okay, we are in a maximal drag situation. Oh, aerodynamics are actually forcing us down. That's not great. Uh, well, breaks out then. Uh, just don't point at the prograde vector. Come on, don't do that. Uh, that doesn't help. Anyway, heating is not going to be a problem around Duna. Its atmosphere is too light. It's definitely pointing prograde. At least we have the air brakes. I can't get it away from prograde. It's too aerodynamically stable. <laughs> so, we'll have to go deeper in the atmosphere the next time with something like this and see how that goes. This was too cautious. But I was hoping that we'd be able to maintain the nose-up orientation. We couldn't do that. And of course, I wasn't going to turn on the RCS. We need that mod propellant for other things. 
Now we can open the bay to get some power back. And let's see as soon as we can get to retrograde so that we can capture. We want to point a little bit down to manage our periapsis. Ike looms. Okay, we have captured. Should we just go for the Ike one first, maybe? The, there's a module around Ike after all. Well, that's an Ike encounter. After 19 hours. It's only showing me that encounter half of the time. That doesn't help. Okay, well, I'm not going to think about that right now then. Let's just get this part done first, otherwise we'll fall back into the atmosphere and then we'll see how we encounter Ike. I, I mean, if we wanted to just go down to the satellite, well, the module around Duna, we could just pass through Duna's atmosphere again and again. Where is Duna anyway? Uh, but if we're going to go to Ike, we don't want to do that, so. Okay, well, I can't quite see Duna. We'll just do this burn. So we're just lifting our orbit above the atmosphere. Well, there's a flashing semblance of an Ike encounter. Oh, maybe that's the module. Maybe, uh, oh, there's a different contract for making orbit around Ike. Satellite within an equatorial orbit of Ike. Well, I guess we have to do that first. Um, is the module going the same way around? No, of course it's not. Well, darn it, let's get the module first. It seems easier right now anyway. Okay, we, we launched. Okay, fine. We'll just go into Ike at SOI and figure out what's going on. Alright, and now we need a correction. I'll just, I just want the descending node to be right at the periapsis, and then we'll get the periapsis to the target orbit. In this case, it's the module. But we'll be carrying the module with us when we make further maneuvers, so... That cuts into our delta V later on. So technically doing everything we can before picking up the modules will be better, but I think this is easier right now. Okay, we'll use some thrust to also help get us over to the node. Come on, come on. Okay, let's see. Oh, that's good enough. So after we grab this module, we grab the other module around Duna. And then we'll come back and try and meet this orbit and go the other way around Ike. Oh, are we going to lose communication? Nope. We've got this other Duna mission relay satellite to work with and other sats as well. So we are good on communication. Gotta stay on this map for the retro and that's because I want to see when the markers line up, basically. Right now the markers don't seem to be moving. Oh, they did there. We'll do a whole orbit. 84.3 meters per second there. We need to reserve some to go back home, so there's that. And, you know, maybe some corrections once we get back home. But we've got our orbit around Ike for now. And let me just check in the tracking station to see how much time we have until the other stuff we have to do, since this is in a stable position now. Duna Mission 3 will come in in 6 days, and then Dres Base in 15, so... We can continue with our Scavenger 1 activities until then. Okay, meeting up with our target module. And we'll have the first use of our little tugs. Okay. Slowing down. And maybe we can push that marker. Oh, that's the wrong way around though. Oops. Okay, 0 0.1 kilometers sounds good. Well, right there, our communications will be fine. We've got this Duna mission relay sat. We've got that other Duna mission that seems to be communicating for us. So right there, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Okay, what do we have here? I think it's a fuel tank. No, it's a spent SRB? I don't want SRBs. <laughs>
great. Okay. Well, it'll be interesting if we've got two of these, because they're going to have trouble fitting in like this. We would probably have had to have had them side by side instead of uh, like this. I tried to vary the arrangement, but maybe we should have slapped some spare docking ports in various locations, even if tugs didn't occupy them, just to give us some options in terms of orientation. Okay, let's just uh, stop here. Okay, I think since it's a longish thing, I'm gonna hope that the other thing is like a cupola or some sort of flattish thing and put that one there. The longish thing we better put here. I don't know if it's going to have enough clearance with that, all this stuff here. We'll see. Let's try, let's try it out. Okay. Ooh, a little bit choppy there. And we need to be alongside it, basically. Something like that orientation would do. Uh, maybe... Like that. Maybe it's not that long. I need ca caps lock again. <laughs> Even though these are the small RCS thrusters, I still need caps lock. But at least the small RCS thrusters make this sort of tug possible. Okay, we've grabbed it. Now we control from here. And we target that docking port and see how we can do that. Okay, that, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we'll go towards and make sure to correct again, prograde vector on the opposite side of the target. I'm overdoing the gap here in order to line up first so that we get the target vector close to our crosshairs and then we can go straight in. Seems a bit weird because the shuttle is tilted a bit but I think the magnetism will work the rest. Clearance for the next thing though is gonna be rough. Maybe we should have grabbed it off of on one end instead. Okay, a magnetism. RCS off. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll see what we have to get from Duna Orbit. Yeah, you know, we could probably shift that up a bit. With an engineer here, if we can get an engineer over here, maybe we could grab the docking port and move it forward. Anyway, uh, we can close the bay. That's good, right? Yep. Yeah. Let me just... Oh, that's the wrong part anyway. Yeah, definitely we have clearance to close the bay. Just open that up. All right, we need to get the other module from Duna Orbit. So we need to break orbit around Ike. It's a pretty low module. It's like just outside the atmosphere. They always put it so low. It's a little bit annoying. Okay, so this will be our burn to exit. We are getting power. Now at least it's an empty hammer. <laughs> at least they didn't have it full of fuel. That would be super annoying. Alright, and... go. What if it's two hammers? It's gonna be so annoying. Okay, well that'll be close enough. Build a new orbital station around Ike. I forgot about that. We should have had the capacity for five Kerbals in here. Now, if it her turns out that the module we're picking up is a Mark II crew cabin. <laughs> yeah, but it's not marking this as a new station that has an antenna docking port and can generate power. We have docking ports. We have an antenna and we can generate power. I guess it's... it probably... I thought it would be new by, uh, by this, this contract standards, but I'm not sure. Anyway, we could still do, do this. Well, it's not checked mark a new unmanned probe that has an antenna and can generate power either, so I don't know. And that maybe we'll go with this one, or should we pull it down further? Um, 
How long is our orbit? Two hours? I think we can deal with that. It's not super precise right now, but at AppWaps this week it probably make it a little bit better. Well, we could do this, 44 meter per second burn to get really close, but is it worth it delta V-wise? It might end up being about the same anyway. Alright, I'll correct the inclination. We'll only be using partial thrust, so let's just start the burn now. And we have a one kilometer rendezvous. Okay, retro. Oh no, I think it's another one. Why are they leaving all these SRBs in orbit of Duna? You suppose that would fit vertically in here? Maybe. This is horrible. Like I ever wanted to bring SRVs back in the first place. So, if it is 2.9 meters, the cargo bay is 3.75 in that direction in the height. It would fit. So, maybe it's alright. I, yeah, I mean, the width and length, I, I probably should have known, because uh, that it, it's a matter of orientation, but that means that it's the 1.25 meter parts, basically, they're rounding. So, okay, alright. 2.9 meters should fit vertically in the bay. Let's find out. Zero that out a little bit better, and tug time. Is the tug in good enough circumstances? Yeah, I think so. It's gonna boink that thing. Oh, it actually sort of fits into the cone, that's fancy. Okay. But we really have to be precise about it if we want to fit it in the bay properly. Okay, that makes sense to me. Signal's pretty bad right now, though. We better watch out. Unfortunately, SAS doesn't hold things perfectly steady. It just sort of pretends sometimes to hold it steady. Okay. See, I mean, it's rolled a bit for no apparent reason. There's one reason sometimes I like MechJet better for just holding things together. I mean, just holding orientation properly. Uh, that's not exactly where I wanted it, but alright. Okay, so we want that docking port. Okay, now let's reorient. Ah, SAS, come on! I'm just eyeballing it. There's no, nothing too special going on here. Okay, let me take caps lock off because sometimes you can't see the puffs if you've got caps lock on. We can't really use the target marker very well in this situation because we're not going to be able to line up with it like because the body of the entire craft is in the way. Can't even always see the prograde and retrograde markers to use those. It's a tight fit. Oh, we've got... Okay, we're docked. Uh, can we close the bay? Is it poking below the bay? No. Is it closable? E yep. Okay, it's good. It's all good. Alright. And we've got 16... Uh, 1,692 meters per second left. This is a little bit askew, but it's not too bad. Alright. No, I don't need the bay lights anymore. So we could do that one more contract, the satellite in equatorial orbit of Ike, I think, and still have enough to go back home. Let's see, we need to get to Ike at some point. Target Ike. But we need to go retrograde around Ike this time. So we'll be spending 316 on the transfer. And uh, 150, let's call it, for getting into orbit. We may need a little bit of inclination help there. I don't know, it's probably close enough for the stock contracts. And then we have to get back out 
to transfer back to Kerbin. Though, uh, with Ike being so quick around Duna, maybe we don't need to transfer back out to uh, for the return to Kerbin. We'll have to see about that. But we'll have a reasonable amount to work with for that part of things. So we've got this plotted, and this burn will be in two hours. I think we can do that, but I'm paranoid, so let's just quickly check the tracking station. Okay, this still it still still says six days. Of course, I've got the twenty four hour day thing on, so it's a long day. It's a long day for a little space plane. Uh, but all right, still on six days here. I was thinking that we would be doing both missions in this episode, but it's been pretty much a space uh, the scavenger one the whole time. I think we'll just wrap it up with the scavenger one and wait till next time for doing a mission three. Oh, there's Ike peering out. Does that rule work with Ike? That uh, when it peers over the horizon, it's time to burn for it? I don't even know. That was the moon rule, but I didn't know if it was an Ike rule. That's not a general rule, by the way. It wouldn't work for Earth's moon or anything. But, but this could be just happenstance. Well, I mean, the phase angle must be set, actually. So maybe it's not happenstance. Well, we have no practical use for the mob propellant anymore, so we should do some with it. Just to dump it. We'll probably do some mob propellant stuff to get into orbit around Ike, just to use it up. Let's see. Well, we've got something going. It's a little bit complicated. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, on to Ike. Again. <laughs> Once again to Ike. It doesn't really say that this is a new unmanned probe, though. So maybe this is useless. But I don't know why it doesn't say that this is an unmanned, because it is. So I don't get that. And I didn't pick up the contract after launching this. We launched this after picking up the contract. Ah, uh, the RCS might be too weak to do this quickly. We're not still on fine control. Nope. Alright, alright, I'll use the engines. Or just the engine. Might be if I go back to the mission control and come back here, it'll mark it properly. Okay, well, it's satisfied with the orbit. Just trying to remind it what the requirements for the contract were. Satellite. Antenna can generate power. And all that business. All right, we have reminded it. Will it accept it now? Space planes are probes too. Nope. Well, we tried. Maybe you guys can tell me what I'm missing here that it doesn't like about this. I mean, I don't think I accepted it after launching the space plane. We've basically not taken any contracts since launching the space plane, so... I don't know what the deal is. Okay, okay, no, just time warp that. All right, well, anyway, here it is around Ike. We're, we're going to leave it here, and next time we'll deal with Duna Mission 3, which is going to try and land at Duna twice in two different locations. We'll see how that works out for us. That's a whole different thing. But we got our two modules. Can we bring it back to Kerbin? Can we bring them back to Kerbin? I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.